This is All India Radio. Under the Azadi Kamrit Mahotsav series of Spotlight Program, now we bring a discussion on India's journey in space programs. The participants are Pallav Bagla, science communicator and senior science journalist and Sanjay Jha, journalist. India is celebrating 75th anniversary of its independence and in this period we have done a lot on our space programs. So far, India's journey has been tremendous in the space sector. Mr. Bagla, you have seen the progress India has made from Thumba to Mangalayan. How do you see this progress from 1947 to 2022? India's space program is not as old as the independence. The Indian space program started much later, but I think the Indian Space Research Organization and the Department of Space is certainly a jewel in the crown of India. India's space journey started small and is now revving up and reaching a stage where it will start competing with the big powers of the world and get into commercial space. So a journey which started with a small satellite launched from then USSR to now when India has end-to-end capabilities both of making satellites, making rockets, and then doing interplanetary leaps. So the journey has been very good. And also the space program has protected India and its borders remarkably well. We have seen how space programs have sort of helped not just our border security, but also the weather prediction. Our weather prediction capability have really improved from the earlier days to now. What are the sectors which has really benefited in this period of the space journey in India? You pointed out weather prediction and weather forecasting. When India became independent, we were dependent on ground-based observations for weather prediction. And you will be surprised to hear that the first hybrid satellites where both communications and weather instruments were put together anywhere in the world came from India and the Indian Space Research Organization. Since then, now India has dedicated satellites which do earth imaging on an hourly basis and help in weather forecasting. Same way, there are dedicated satellites for ocean monitoring. There are satellites which monitor the snow in the Himalayas. So the weather prediction and weather forecasting has been one significant area where India's space leap has helped. And one place where there has been a remarkable difference which has been made in weather prediction has been in the forecasting of the path of cyclones. Go back to the early 1970s and in that decade, there was a cyclone which struck parts of Andhra Pradesh and also Bangladesh and the death toll was about 3 lakh people who died in that cyclone. After satellites came into the picture, the numbers of people who died started dropping and today when the cyclone comes from the Bay of Bengal or the Arabian Sea, India's weather office can predict so accurately that the numbers of deaths of people dying due to the cyclones has dropped to double digits. So that is the remarkable achievement which satellites and space observations has made in weather forecasting and cyclone prediction. The other areas where space technology has made a lot of difference is any time when Sanjay, you or me both go to the ATM machine to withdraw cash. The ATM machine connects with the satellite and the data is conveyed up and down and then you can get your money out of the ATM machine. So any cash dispensation from the ATM machine happens thanks to India's satellites. So those are two areas which affect our everyday life. I had also pointed out how space technology has helped in protecting India's borders. In the same fashion, there has been a communications revolution in the country from having literally one small Doordarshan national channel to now having hundreds of television channels of different genres across India all have happened thanks to satellite television and satellite technology. Agriculture has benefited. Smart city planning has benefited. So the space journey for India has certainly helped India leap into a place where Indians and the country need to be very proud of its scientists and engineers who have contributed remarkably well on India's space front. 
absolutely indian scientific community should be congratulated for the stupendous success we have in this area in the cold war time exploration of space was limited between two big powers united states and the then ussr but now we see countries like india taking a lead in space whether it's launching of satellites we are not just launching our own satellites but we are also providing the services to other countries similarly we are competing with the big countries and even sending mangalyaan so from a small satellite communication in the orbit now we are exploring the biggest space how do you measure the success of a country like india in this area see not just earth observation but india also did interplanetary observation and the first big success for india came through chandrayaan 1 Chandrayaan 1 was a satellite where India was the captain and there were global players who were participating in the satellite through their payloads and Chandrayaan 1 was an amazing success from India because it happened at a time when there was technology denial and sanctions on India yet India took on international partners and the remarkable outcome of Chandrayaan 1 which was India's maiden mission to the moon was that it found the first evidence of the presence of water molecules on the surface of the moon until chandrayaan 1 found water molecules on the moon moon was considered a parched dry desert place but then india's chandrayaan 1 rewrote the lunar planetary history and rest is now well known now that countries are vying to revisiting in person the moon surface and finally having habitation on the moon if chandrayaan 1 was a remarkable success then few years later came india's own mangalyaan mission or the mars orbiter mission as isro calls it this was india's maiden attempt to go outside the earth's gravity to another planet Mangalyaan was a remarkable mission conceived and delivered in record time and on its maiden attempt India reached the orbit of Mars a feat which was not even achieved by big powers like USSR Russia and America China had also failed in that India did remarkably well and Mangalyaan which had a nominative life of 6 months continues to operate in the orbit of Mars and as an aside i can tell you i covered the mangalyaan mission in a very big way and outside isro i was the only person whose fingerprints were and are on mangalyaan even as it continues to orbit mars today so it was a remarkable achievement by india to send a small robotic satellite all the way to mars and then get data back from mars and after that came chandrayaan 2 in which the orbiter continues to function we did have a setback in the lander the vikram lander and the rover did not achieve its desired target but the chandrayaan 2 orbiter continues to work and in times to come there is one more very big mission which india is working on and attempting which is the gaganyaan mission gaganyaan is a mission where india wants to send its own astronaut on an indian rocket from indian soil into space and that is a work in progress if all had gone well then by now maybe before the 15th of august we could well have had an indian in space but there have been delays thanks to many reasons but the work is still going on and we should hope and that that the next one or two years we will have an indian in space on an indian rocket from indian soil you interestingly mention about gaganyaan it's a great moment of pride for india on the 75th anniversary of our independence we are planning to send our astronaut in in our own rocket from india we have had indians in the space but obviously that were from outside india how exciting this seems like what are the preparation going on and what can we expect on this front even though there is a delay in it Gaganyaan is now delayed and may happen only at the end of 2024 but already India has trained four of its Indian Air Force test pilots who are trained as astronauts and they are continuing to train India is continuing to develop its Bahubali or the geosynchronous satellite launch vehicle Mark 3 launcher to make it human rated and then the allied technologies of life support have also been developed and incidentally 
the food that is necessary for the astronauts are all being prepared in India. The work is in full steam and the government has allocated about 9,000 crores for this mega project, which India hopes to achieve very soon. There are two uncrewed or unmanned space flights which will be attempted in the next few months. And after that, India would attempt sending an astronaut up to one week in space, up to three astronauts for up to one week in space. So it can be any one or two or three, or it can be for any duration less than seven days. So if India achieves that, then on an independent basis, India would only be the fourth country to have been able to send astronauts into space. The first was the then USSR or Russia, then America, and then China. And China achieved that in 2003, and since then, no other country has been able or even has a plan of sending humans into space on their own independent rockets which have been indigenously developed. So it is a remarkable work in progress and I hope I can live to see the day when India's astronauts go into space from Shri Harikota. Pallav, India's space program is not just benefiting the Indian citizens or India as such. Many countries around the world are dependent on our space data, space technologies. They look forward for what we do in that sphere. How are we benefiting the world community with our space journey? Well, I think we are still very young players in that. We are just about learning to walk. There have been many small satellites of many different countries which India has launched on its own rockets. But compared to big global players like Russia and Ariane Space and America, I think still a long way to go. As far as data goes, I think the Indian Earth Observation Satellite have remarkable capabilities and some of them can even image from space less than half a meter resolution. Those pictures are of high demand both in India and abroad and that is helping not just the India in uh, its uh, rapid development for a new India in this Amritkal but also helping the world in many places where people want to access quality images at low cost and then help in better urban planning and in infrastructure development. I must also point out that jointly India and America are today developing a satellite called NISAR, which is a joint development between NASA and ISRO. And this will be an Earth observation satellite, which will be one of the most expensive Earth observation satellites built anywhere in the world. It will cost upwards of a billion dollars and India and USA are jointly working on it and we will see it coming to a fruition in a few years from now. There has been a delay on that project, but then such projects which have huge implications and huge costs certainly take time to develop. But that will be one satellite which the world will look forward for its data as far as monitoring glaciers, waterways, and vegetation is concerned across the globe. So NISAR is one satellite which will excite not just India, America, but the entire global community. In the coming time, I think we will see a refinement of uh, both communication technologies. Satellite-based internet will become omnipresent across wide parts of India. And the refinement in imaging is going to be an important aspect of Earth observation as India goes ahead. But more and more, I am looking at the startup space in India where there are now more than 50 startup companies which are working in space technology since Prime Minister Narendra Modi has unlocked the space sector. Now with the unlocking, private Indian space industry is revving up and that will offer many solutions and I'm sure there are solutions which you and I have not even thought about. Right. Absolutely, Pallav. You rightly pointed out nobody knows the scope and dimensions of the progress, how the space journey will happen. We are already seen 5G. There's going to be more progress. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. You were listening to a discussion on India's journey in space programs under the Azadi Kamrit Mahotsav series. The participants were Pallav Bagla, science communicator and senior science journalist and Sanjay Jha, journalist. This program is produced and presented by the News Services Division of All India Radio.